All right, you guys, welcome back. Hope all is well. Um, I wanted to do a quick shop update here for you guys. Uh, some people have been asking for some different, uh, see different things, so I figured I'd go over them. So the shop is pretty uh, similar since the last time I updated it. Uh, equipment is as well. Uh, we'll go, actually, we'll start with this. Uh, so recently I've been working on installing air conditioning and heating into my shop. Uh, as many of you guys know, I live in Alabama, so it, it, our cooling season is a lot greater than our heating season. So I really wanted to get air conditioning in here. This shop is heavily insulated. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's got upgraded insulation all through it to help keep temperature. And previously I've been heating through resistive heating, just straight electricity. So you guys can see I got one, two, and I also to help with the really, really cold days. I don't know where I put it, but I have a kerosene heater as well over there it burns kerosene and i have propane on top of that as well um, and both those out of all those the kerosene is the cheapest to run i mean the most expensive to run electricity is expensive to run as well um, especially since that's resistive resistive heat each one of those is 5,000 watts so uh, they're pretty expensive to run it's, it's about 10,000 watts of just straight resistive heat that's pretty expensive um, i think it's I calculated it one day how much to run it per hour. I want to say it is 40 cents, maybe 20 cents, somewhere around there. It's less than 50 cents an hour to run all both those. Obviously, I'm not running it um, full time. Dog here is throwing a fit because I'm talking to myself. But uh, I don't normally run it full time, only when I'm going to use the shop. And so I started up a few hours before. But continuing on. I installed this air conditioner and heater. This is not a furnace. Well, technically it's a furnace, but it's a heat pump air conditioner, uh, which is more popular down south than is up north. Heat pumps work good in 30, 40 degrees um, temperatures. Anything less than that, you want a furnace. But <coughs> pretty much what it is is a reverse air conditioner. It's a reverse air conditioner. And so it takes the heat outside, brings it in. So it's kind of got to be somewhat warm to use it. And it's also got emergency uh, backup resistive heat like those air conditioners, except this one's more forced. See, you guys can see these are the resistive coils. Those are essentially heating coils. That's expensive to run, kind of like a hair dryer or just a regular space heater. But it's a Ream two-ton unit. I got this unit actually pulled out of my house. It was hit by lightning. And it was destroyed by lightning and so insurance put in a new one uh, and it was not built to code or installed to code by the previous owner so it had to be removed uh, it was against code it was a, a safety hazard for the people that worked on it so i pulled it out and we i went ahead and repaired it it needed a new this has what's called an x13 electric motor in it and it kind of fluct it's it has a controller module on the back of it and i had to replace that that was uh, damaged by lightning. It also had the main control board in here that controls all the systems. That was hit by lightning. That had to be replaced as well. That's only the part. That's the only parts in here that went bad. Otherwise, uh, the system was pretty complete. Uh, I had to run new uh, new line set, brazen the new line set here down. I did all this uh, in about two days. Uh, you got your different line sets and like I was saying it's a reverse air conditioner in the winter and it's an air conditioner in the summer depending on how you have it set so um, it brings in hot air or it removes hot air just depends of course you got your condensate drain here this is honestly I've worked on air conditioners before but I've never really installed one but this is my an install I did you got your liquid your uh, suction and your condensate drain Pretty simple system really I ran a thermostat into here and yeah so something different about heat pumps is you got emergency heat which is that strip heating really expensive to run heat is uh, the heat pump running and if it if it needs assistance it'll turn the strips on to help it if it the temperature differential between what's set and what it is is too great but yeah ran the thermostat lines uh, that system was pretty good. The coil was good. Uh, I had to put the sensing bulb on and I mounted it. Uh, these are kind of standard uh, 
mounts where you'd find in the pan of a where you sit on the set the air conditioner on in the pan i didn't do a pan in here because it's, it's in a shop um, and it's suspended by these metal cables i figured that would, these each of these cables are rated to 340 pounds each this thing only weighs like 50 60 pounds not much got my disconnect over there and yeah so it's a ream two ton unit i'll go over uh on the outside here you're gonna have to stay here bud stay so out here i installed the unit just outside uh, as you can see it's been hit by a limb before no big deal and it's fairly new it's a 2010 model so it's eight years old and like i said this was damaged by electricity as well this is the pad it was sitting on and just uh, give you a, an idea of what happened so you can see uh, lightning hit it and went up through the base of it it shattered this blasted apart i kind of have it uh, epoxied back together went up through the chassis here or the the paneling and pretty much shocked and then went up into my house essentially and uh, damaged a whole bunch of stuff in my house but this surprisingly didn't sustain too much damage um, it did damage like the shockwave damage the TXV valve I had to replace that uh, that was uh, not too difficult uh, I think the part was like 80 90 bucks and had to braze that in and braze the little temperature sensors in and uh, the test bulb and that's pretty much it what I had to do without this outside unit um, seems pretty good it's a 15 sear so it is pretty efficient it's very quiet I'll turn it on here in a second but yeah brazed in some uh, 3 8 inch liquid line 3 quarter inch suction line I ran the thermostat wire out of here this is a dryer vent I used made it uh, look more clean and you got your condensate drain and your power this is a 220 so you can see pretty simple system not difficult at all charged it up I think it held actually it says on here 94.2 ounces which is like five pounds 10 ounces I think I put it to like five pounds 13 or five pins five pounds 12 because I put in this filter dryer but yeah so I now have air conditioning in my shop it's two ton I hope it's uh, I, it should be enough to keep the shop cool and comfortable uh, definitely good for the heat for sure but we'll go kick it on we'll kick it on here and uh, as you can see it's 67 and we'll flick the heat on and we will you can actually hear that there's a for a heat pump there's a switch over valve um, that it runs to switch between heating and air conditioning you can see it just started up I gotta I'm gonna put in a return slot so I can put a filter in there so it's not um, sucking in dust that's my next project to do here soon and on this side you can hear it running I'll stick you in front of it so with the heat pump the air isn't there that's coming out the temperature temperature differential is not crazy huge uh, just because it's not heating it up really hot if the strip heat is on it'll heat it up pretty hot but other than that it kind of it, it maintains it more than it does heat it and it'll heat it slowly but if it, it turn on the resistive heat it'll kick it up a little faster but yeah it's pretty quiet I'm, I'm happy with it I was gonna put a mini split in it but since this happened to this unit I went ahead and just referred this unit I would say I'd probably get another 10 years out of it it's a R410A so it's the newer style refrigerant it's not R22, so it's pretty cheap uh, to run and operate. And we'll see. I want to get a duct. I want to duct this side out a little bit, kind of curve it out. Instead of it kind of right now, it just blasts that way. I do have some duct pieces. I'm just going to cut and rivet together and have it come out, blast this way. That's the plan. I'll let you see how quiet the uh, outside unit is. It's kind of hard to tell in the GoPro, but I'll let you see. See, it's very quiet it's running in heat mode right now so the air coming out of it is very cold it's essentially turning this outside portion into the air conditioner 
and that inside portion into a heater. So the air coming out of here is colder than the air in the surroundings here, which is kind of cool. And this line is warm and this line gets really hot, bringing in the heat. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, what happened with that. It's uh, now I got a nice climate controlled shop here for these hot Alabama summers. And recently we've been getting pretty cold temperatures with the um, cold temperatures with the uh, winters here. We've been getting quite a bit of snow. Well, not snow, but um, quite a bit of cold temperatures. And we have gotten snow in the previous winters. So that's pretty interesting. So we'll go ahead and test the temperature coming out of that. That's not right. <laughs> Actually, I want to bet those heating coils are on. Yeah, those heating coils are on to help it uh, get started. So you can see the temperature of them heating coils is about 350 degrees. And that's pretty, that's pretty hot. So that's heating my shop. And you can see, hopefully it gets right with the temperature. Of the suction line's about 100 degrees, uh, which is good. Shop. And he wants the laser, that's why he's barking. So it's 70, 100, not bad. All right, so I'm, I'm happy with that install, worked well. Moving on to the equipment stuff. I know you, a lot of you guys like to watch my equipment review videos and stuff. Um, everything's doing good. 345 is still sitting there. I, I honestly don't want to work it on anymore. It's one of the few machines that I just, I just haven't figured out what's wrong with it yet. I've rebuilt the carb and cleaned it about a million times, replaced the plugs. I've pretty much done everything I can think of to do. I'm not sure what's going to happen with it. Uh, we'll see. 155, that gets uh, used quite frequently. The Z Master uh, Toro is doing good. It's got 290 hours on it. I just recently did an oil change. Uh, been a good machine. The Red Max trimmer, the project trimmer I've been waiting on. I'm doing the the parts. Hang on one second. Let me do with this nut. All right. So moving on. Now that Fred here has settled down a bit, uh, the Husqvarna 455 Rancher. It's been 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 used quite uh, frequently recently. Uh, it's really clean right now because I just went through and cleaned it really well. It was really dirty, covered with sawdust. Uh, it has a uh, uh, Alaskan log mill on it right now to cut wood. I had that lightning that I was talking about that hit that went through a large oak. And I've been uh, milling out the boards for it. You guys can see these uh, large oak boards I've cut with that saw. Milling is really hard on a chainsaw. Uh, it pretty much runs full throttle all the way through. And you... Um, it's just really hard on a saw. You gotta have a ripping chain or else it takes a really long time. Fred. You gotta have a ripping chain or else it takes a really long time. And it, I can pretty much get through two, cutting two of those boards before I gotta refill up the tank. I'll show you guys this wood I'm talking about. I got a couple slabs over here I've been cutting. And it, it is really hard on the saw and it's, um, because it's running full throttle. As you guys can see, here's the chunks of wood I've been milling out. Here's a good example. You're pretty much cutting it lengthwise here. Each one of those takes about uh, 15 minutes to cut through. Um, maybe a little more, a little less, depending on how much I'm pushing it. As you guys can see, here's the actual size of the oak tree that fell over. It is a little bit bigger than this because this is a piece that was cut further up. But yeah, you guys can see, you can probably gauge how big uh, this tree actually was and how lightning damaged it. Uh, some of these are a little bit more difficult to mill than others and this is all oak so it's really really hard wood and uh, takes time. All right we'll head back to the shop now. There's another view of the AC install. Alright, 
generator's doing good. Uh, I've tested uh, once a month here on propane. I don't want to put gas in it, just to keep the carb clean. Uh, yeah, I mean, overall, that's a pretty good update. I got a, a new toolbox here for the shop. It's a Husky. Getting it filled up with all, a whole bunch of stuff here. All different sorts of stuff that you'd use. Shop's pretty well cleaned up right now. Uh, the Honeywell generator. If you need any parts off of it, let me know. I'll send them to you. But I, I'm done working on that. The in, Since the inverter's bad, the uh, flywheel's messed up, and the uh, engine mounts are all screwed up, we're just going to part it out. Honeywell, the bet with the bet, I mean the Generac with the bad inverter, that's done as well. The inverter costs more than the actual generator. Honda Tiller's doing good. This um, machine's doing great. I recently had to put a new a new capacitor on it. This has points and well, new condenser. This has points and condenser system on it, and I had to put a new condenser on it. Turns out you can find those condensers at like O'Reilly's or AutoZone. Not too difficult. And uh, I really haven't had any problems out of this machine. This is one of my favorite machines to work on because it's so it's built so well. Like the the materials used in it are all uh, really strong. You can abuse it, and it still runs great. Um, I do need to get a new belt for it because this one's getting kind of loose. And uh, but yeah, it's an old Kohler K series. Runs great. And that's. Uh, I think uh, the Red Max, it's, I'm waiting for parts to get a little cheaper on that just because they're, even the Chinese carb for it is really expensive. And I'm having difficulty, it's got a really, really rare carb. I'm kind of having difficulty finding it. So uh, we're going to wait a little while on that. But overall, I think uh, the shop's pretty similar. Pretty much all the equipment's in good condition. 345, besides the 345. So if you guys want to see any videos, let me know. I'll go ahead and shoot you guys up a, a video. I know somebody asked for some sprink, more sprinkler videos. Um, those are uh, don't do those as often, just because the, uh, not too many people watch them. But uh, I'll go ahead and throw it up for that guy. Um, but yeah. So if you guys know, want to see any videos, want to see anything in the shop, you guys see, want more information about it, just feel free to let me know, and I'll try to get it. If you, whatever type of videos you guys want, I'll try to make them. I know a lot of you guys, you guys love the truck videos and we'll, we'll get more of those truck videos. Those take time, like I said. And, uh, yeah, maybe we'll get some more equipment right. review videos. Right. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it, you guys. I'll let you guys go. So comment down below what you guys want to see or if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.